me verbs in Greek. Oh no, not more verbs. This is one of people's least favourite bits of the Greek verb. That is a shame. They are slightly frustrating. They are left till chapter 19 in Duff. They are left till late in many textbooks. They are not disastrous and I'm hoping that in this video I can introduce an overview of them and help you crack as much as you're going to need to be able to cope with with meat verbs. Basic idea. You have these verbs and a good set to use is to thomi, to thermi and hystermi. The aorist for these have a different stem. It's called by Duff the verbal stem and the stem is do, the, and sta. You'll notice that you've got a shorter vowel than in the present and the present has a reduplication which is a little bit awkward and hystermy but it is there. So me verbs have a slightly different set of endings in the present a reduplicated stem. It is their present that is weird. Once you're outside of the present and the imperfect as related to the present, then the rest of it is actually relatively straightforward and similar to the kind of verb forms that you've seen already. This can be seen if you have an overview of the basic verb. We'll use to thermi in the present to thermi in the imperfect augment present stem. Etithan. Future. You're now going to use the shortened stem, your sigma, and then the normal endings, thersol. The aorist is a then, although there's a note in the dictionary that form is not used, only the plural is. So you've got what it could, should be, but not what you actually then see in the book. I put aorist, stroke, strong aorist, because depending on the verb, some of them will have more regular endings than others. Just like any normal verb. Future passive, you've then got the future passive. You get your there, and then you add thersomai in the end. You've already seen from Grassman's Law that you can't have theth. So actually, you've then got to change that so that it's teth. And the future passive is teth there, semi. Air is passive. You've got your augment. And then the same thing as the future, because you're adding fair to theh. So you're going to have eh te then. And then the perfect, you'll get your duplication, your stem, and your kappa alpha. So you've got present stem, present stem, present augment, then you've got aorist verbal stem plus sigma, then you've got the verbal stem plus an augment, and possibly a sigma if it's regular. You've got the verbal stem plus thes, verbal stem plus an augment plus a theta, and a duplicated verbal stem. So very similar patterns occur to in the other verbs and outside of the present, they don't look so bizarre. How do you conjugate the present? Didormi, didors, didorsi, didomen, didote, didorasi, or didorasin. The things to notice is you change vowel length halfway through the paradigm. So the singular ones have long vowels, the plural ones have short vowels. Compare that with luo. It's only really the singular ones that look a bit weird as well. Didormi, it's that me that's characteristic. 
De Dors, long vowel, but not that different to Luis. And then De Dorsi is a bit weird. And you've got to notice the difference between the third person singular and the third person plural, because they both end in C, and De Dorsi is singular and De Dorsi is plural. To Thermi, you see a very similar pattern. To Thermi, To Thers, To Thersi, Tithamen, Tithata, To Thersi. Histermi, again, very similar. Histermi, histers, histersi. Now, this time, the basic underlying vowel is actually an alpha that's extended to an eta. So you get histamen, histate, histarsi. So, long vowel to short vowel, slightly different singulars, otherwise, same as you'd expect. Histermi is a bit different again. Short version. We'll take both regular and irregular forms. If you see st, stare, sta, then you've got histemi. Longer version, you've actually got a difference. So it means stand, but you can stand up yourself or you can stand someone up by getting someone up or set up a stall or in Greek often a trophy, a pile of helmets after a battle or something. Those two different versions of the idea are transitive and intransitive. I stand up is intransitive. There's no object there. I stand you up or set up a stall is transitive because there is an object. The transitive version uses regular endings. So you get histermi. Future is in the middle. So it's no, future sterso. Aorist esterso. That's the transitive version. The intransitive version uses different endings. Histermi, it's the same in the present, but then the future becomes middle, and the aorist is strong. So the intransitive has a middle future and a strong aorist. They've all got stare as their root, but what you do with that stare varies. A few other relevant points. Hear me. The basic underlying verb there is actually just he, which reduplicates to here in the present. So your basic verb there is he. You will have seen from Greek in general that he is not the kind of syllable that's going to hang around a lot. So if you end up with something like aphes, the af is from apo. The es is an imperative. It means forgive from afiemi. But it's quite hard to see that there's any verb in there at all. In fact, hiemi only exists in compounds in the New Testament. It means send. So you will get used to seeing different kinds of compounds and you always have to learn how that compound works. There's a group of verbs that have a slightly different, they have deiknumi, regnumi, they have umi and quite often a n before that as well. Deiknumi means I show. Regnumi means I break. They have slightly unusual sets of endings. I can give you the entire paradigms, but the important thing to bear in mind is that is quite a clear stem. And once you end out of the present, the endings are likely to look much more regular in any case. If you learn them as principal parts, you will learn what happens to each different tense 
And once you know the first person singular, you can probably work out the rest of them. Actually, Apolumi is slightly different and is rapidly becoming Apoluo. Now, this differs from Apoluo like you know it because it's got a double lamba in it. And this is indicative of something's happening. These verbs are sufficiently irritating that they are phasing out in coining. And sometimes you'll notice in the New Testament that there are two different versions. There's the me version, and there's actually what's just become a standard version like luo. And certainly the number of me verbs in the New Testament is much less than the number of me verbs in classical Greek. You get verbs like fermi, I say, but actually fermi only exists in a few parts. So I would say just learn, fermi, I say, Fersin, he says. Farsin, they say. And Efer, he said. Learn those as vocab and don't worry about the full paradigm because it isn't used. Amy is included in this category by Duff. There is some crossover, but it's not really a me verb, and I can explain that me ending for other reasons. So I wouldn't worry too much about Amy, but there are some similarities between it and the me verbs you get. In summary, you have extended present stems. The present has long vowels in the singular, short in the plural. The present singulars are a bit different. After that, other tenses work according to the patterns that you've learned already. Hystermi has both a strong and a weak version. So both regular and irregular forms depending on whether it's transitive or intransitive. There aren't very many because they are working their way out. Learn the, do, sta, and possibly he or here as roots, and you will hopefully recognise this. If in doubt, and you've got a verb that's got some random the, do, sta in it, or random epsilon, this is probably a me verb. The only thing to pay attention to, the only thing to be careful with that, the only thing to be careful with there is this is also, of course, passive. So you will need to be careful that you don't mix tothermi up with passive verbs.